Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to our final lesson. I'm so proud of you for all the work so far that you have done. My mission is to make you the best version of an originator that you can possibly be. And today we are learning how to manage a client after closing. But let's go back to the beginning and find out where we started. We first talked about mindset and belief in yourself and understanding that I can do it, then so can you. Then we talked about how to spend your time the best. Lesson number three was getting really good at taking a 1003. Lesson four is understanding credit report and letters of explanation. Lesson five was all about loan types, purchase business and refi. Lesson six was products and loan programs. Lesson number seven is how to qualify borrowers. Lesson eight was pricing and locking loans. Lesson nine was how to sell. Lesson 10 was the perfect loan process from start to finish. And lesson 11 was how to get more customers. Now that you have more customers and you close your loan, the key is how do you keep the client after closing? I have a phrase, I call it retain what you obtain. Retain what you obtain. If you want to have a long-term legacy in this business, that is the most important thing I will ever teach you. It's how to get a client, how to keep a client, and keep that client happy for life. So how do you manage a customer after closing? The biggest fault from all the loan officers and brokers that I speak to is they do not have a system for following up with the clients after closing. And they will only call the client if there's good news or a good deal on the table. But here's the thing, people will always need you and they always need mortgages. So you always have to stay in front of your clients because life happens. And if you're there from them day one and you stay engaged with them forever, they will use you forever. So when I close my mortgage, the first thing that I do is I send the client a closing gift. But here's my special sauce, you guys. I don't give them just a set of steak knives or a barbecue napkin or a towel for their kitchen that they'll never use to refer me business. I give them a gift that's referable. So your closing gift must be referable. So what I do is I know my clients very well. I know where they work. I know what they do for a living. So I'm gonna mail to their office gift cards. And let's say for example, I'm using coffee cards. We all buy coffee. We all want things for free. So I'll mail to my client's office a FedEx envelope, a UPS envelope, or a courier envelope that they can open directly. So here we are, one week after closing, on their desk is an envelope. They aren't expecting it, they aren't looking for it, it just comes, and I can track it. They rip it open, and it is a handwritten letter for me thanking them for the business and how much I'm gonna be there for their for life for them, and asking them to give me a gift. And the gift they can give for me is to share my business with other people that I could help. And in enclosed, besides a letter, are coffee cards. And either paper clipped or envelope slide inside or taped, doesn't really matter, is my business card on top of every single coffee card. And I'm saying, I wanna buy your office coffee. Enclosed is 20 coffee cards. Please pass them out and refer my good name. And if anybody else needs help, it would mean the world to me. So now think about the customer. They open this gift, their colleagues are around them because they're in an office setting, and they say, what did you get? They go, well, my loan officer, my broker bought me coffee. In fact, bought you all coffee. Here's five bucks for you, five bucks for you, and five bucks for you. Those people who are even thinking about getting a mortgage have your card and have the experience of their colleague right behind them. And they know that you did good work and they're gonna call you if you do good work. So if one in 20 people call you with that alone right there, you have doubled your business. So you shouldn't be giving closing gifts they are not referable gifts. You wanna give closing gifts that are referable. So the first thing I do after closing is I give them a closing gift. The next thing that you want to do to manage your clients for life is to call them every 90 days for the rest of their lives. And just find out as a friend or someone that likes them, what's going on in your life? How's the last few months been? Tell me what the good news is or tell me what you're struggling with. I want to know. Remember, you're an originator, you're a loan officer, you have everything on these people. You know where they bank, where they work, what kind of credit they have, what kind of house they own, how many kids they have, and how old their kids are. You have all this data on them. So to not use that to stay in touch with them is a giant mistake. 
So you wanna call them every 90 days and ask how they're doing. Because I've got seven Ds for you guys. And my seven Ds is step number three. When you're calling your clients, realize they're always going to need you. And my seven Ds are death, diapers, diamonds, divorce, deconstruct, downsize, and debt. People will go through this process in their life many times. So the number one mistake above all mistakes in the history of mistake kind in loan officer land forever and ever and ever and ever is their inability to call their clients after closing and to help them forever. And they only call their clients because rates went down. Well, that's the worst time to call the clients. That's a selfish reason. The number one thing you can do to get great at this business is to add value with every single phone call and realizing that life happens and people go through stuff. And most times their asset of their home is their only asset that means anything to them. It's where most of their money is. So if you really wanna be someone that cares about the customer forever, you will call them every 90 days and walk them through the seven Ds and ask them what's going on, what do you need? Do you have any debt? Are you going through any problems? Do you have any home project plans? Are you upsizing? Are you downsizing? Are you moving? Have you been relocated? Are you doing a home project? Are you going through a divorce? Are you getting engaged? Are you having kids? Life happens. And sometimes you just put out the help. And maybe today that customer doesn't need any help. And then tomorrow they get smacked with an IRS bill. And guess what? They need you again. And because you have a system and a plan and you're connecting with them on social media and you gave them a gift after closing and you call them every 90 days, they have no other person that they would rather go to or go through than you. And that's the magic right there. That's where it all happens. When the customer wants to go through you because they know you and you know them and you become better friends than you are financers, that's when you become a really successful originator. And that's the key component that most people never understand. 20 years later or 30 years later, they're in the business of doing mortgages. Well, I am in the business of doing people and helping people with their next move and their next need and be a connector and an obligator and a resource for your customers. Because it's not just about the closing, it's what will you do after closing to help them for the next 30 to 60 years that matters. And if you can get that down, you will be very, very, very successful at mortgage.